welcome to this month's edition of My Life in Art. I am Parker Anderson, your host. My Life in Art is sponsored by the Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council, the uh, Yavapai County's premier arts advocacy organization. Each month we bring you an interview and profile with a leading citizen in the artistic community, and this month we are proud to have Helen Stevenson, Executive Director of the Prescott Film Festival. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Parker. And Helen, I know this is your second time on the program. You are, uh, have graciously stepped in for a guest who at the last minute could not be here, and we are grateful to have you. My pleasure. So first, tell us a little bit about the Prescott Film Festival, what you do and what it does, and then we will get into your background. Well, this is going to be uh, June 2017, will be uh, our eighth annual festival. So we're really excited about that. Um, we started in 2009 with a monthly series and decided Okay, let's just see how you do a festival every month, and uh, every month, and that was like a practice. And then we went into the uh, full, full-blown annual festival. So, a lot of towns around America, increasing numbers of them, are trying to start up their own film festivals. Um, so, what would you attribute that to? I think there's a prolifer proliferation of independent film, and. The major film festivals like Sundance, etc., they're showing films that are more studio-like films. They're big stars. They have big budgets behind them. Uh, the smaller films needed a voice and to be heard and those artists to be heard, and the smaller regional film festivals supply that. Well, Helen, could you tell us a little bit about what goes into the preparation of a film festival, how you choose what films to show? Okay, yes, uh, it's, I'm laughing because we're we're in the middle now our, our, uh, of all of that. June 9th through the 17th is the festival this year, and we moved it up a month. So um, so we'll see how, how that goes with people, but it's, it's squished down the amount of time we have to get everything done. Uh, we start in January with uh, curating films. We look at other festivals and see, do those films have a, a chance of being a match for a Prescott audience, for an Arizona audience? And we have most of our movie reviewers are Prescottonians, or we have a few from Phoenix and one from Kingman. Um, but they will log on to our um, special thing called Film Festival Fusion, which is a program where you can view the films and then you rate the films. So those people, uh, before January, they go through training. Uh, we have a lot of repeat people, but especially the new people, uh, get trained on how to look at a film critically, how to score a film. Um, and one of the questions they ask is, is this a local audience uh, type film? Will, will Prescottonians like this? And if it's yes and they score high, then we start um, reaching out to the filmmakers and seeing if the films are still available, if they would be willing to come and speak. And on top of getting the films, there's the parties and the after parties, uh, transportation, which Great Lakes Airlines helps us with that. Most of our filmmakers come from LA. Um, all those little pieces. In addition to that, we do free workshops. And the free workshops are through my, my day job, which is the director of the Film and Media Arts Program at Yavapai College. So we coordinate the workshops through the film school, and also the high school student film competition comes through the film school. Um, in addition to screening the films, you often have the filmmakers come in and appear in person, or you have other special guests uh, present as well. Yes. Um, who, uh, who all have you had over the years? Anybody that our audience might have heard of? Um, yes. Um, Ed Asner is probably the largest name we've had come to the festival. And he came and did a play and that he was passionate about doing. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to have him. This year, um, Daniel Roebuck is probably the biggest actor you've never heard of because he's like the second banana guy. But his film that he's bringing to us is a sneak is a uh, 
a work in progress. It's his directorial debut called Getting Grace. Uh, Daniel currently is on The Man in the High Castle. It's an Amazon series that's mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty big deal. Um, he was on Matlock. He was on, he's got 226 acting credits. Wow. wow. So he's, <laughs> yes. So where uh, he had come to Prescott before, uh, when earlier in the festival, I think it was 2010 for a monthly series, and he fell in love with Prescott. And I kept, follow I heard that he was doing this film, uh, mm -hmm. directing and co-writing this film. And so I thought, okay, <clears throat> those, those kind of names will come if, they're, if it's a passion project for them. And this is a passion project for him called Getting Grace. So he is scheduled to come. He's going to fly in from Canada because they'll be <coughs> shooting uh, The Man in the High Castle and, uh, and talk to the audience and do interviews and whatever he can to help promote his film. So, so we're really excited to have Daniel. And he is, he's just a wonderful person, really a lot of fun. And the fact that this is the uh, ninth festival, I think you said, is it's it? The eighth. It's the yes. eighth. Yes. Yes. The fact that it has lasted this long, I presume, shows that Prescott has accepted it, and there has been good attendance. Is that correct? It's it's been very good attendance. We tend to grow about twenty percent a year with wow. the audience, so that's very substantial. Um, and what we do is we do surveys every year, and we listen to what the audience is saying. Um, for example, they've been saying, we don't want to have to decide. Like normally, <laughs> <laughs> normally you go to a festival and you're bouncing around from film to film and workshops and you're making hard decisions. And Prescott said, we just don't like this. So, mm -hmm. okay. So this is what we did. We spread the festival out to two weekends and lots of films on Friday, lots of films on Saturday, and then the first Sunday and the next Friday and Saturday, more films. And in between, we do workshops during the day that are free and open to the public. And in the evening, we'll have one film during the middle of the week. So that way, you can go to any film. You can go to any workshop. Okay. This may be what is, could be considered to be a loaded question, but <laughs> in the aftermath of any of the festivals during the years, have there ever been any, shall we say, audience complaints about the films that have been chosen, any films that, uh, say, offended people, and they can they vo voice that concern? Um, I don't, not for the festival. There, um, I can't think of any of those films. There was a, there was a late night film that was kind of violent one year that, that didn't go over real well. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think so. Mostly, it's um, they wanted to all the films like we're we screen on the campus of Yavapai College. Mm -hmm. The audience wanted all the films to be in the Performing Arts Center mm -hmm. instead of in one of the classrooms or a community room. Right. So we've done that. That's you know spreading the films out like that, so you don't have to compete with them mm -hmm. with each other means that that all the films are in the Performing Arts Center. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Well, how did you come to start the film festival? I'm sure it took a lot of planning and investment. And how, basically, how did it come about? It came about as an idea. Um, I'm from Arizona. I was born and raised in Cochise County. But I went to college in California at Cal State Long Beach and got my bachelor's. And I knew about short films. And I got to move to Prescott. and. I couldn't find anybody who knew what a short film was. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. And then it just came about that, well, we could do a film festival. I had gone to the Sedona Film Festival since either the second or third year. I've gone every single year. And so I started talking to Patrick Swice uh, to see if he would mentor to help us grow this festival. He's the uh, head of the Sedona Film Festival. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Um, and he said yes, and mm -hmm. he was so generous with his time. And I, um, I spent a year in 2008 just figuring out what a festival was, <laughs> learning it by myself, um, and then, you know, doing the monthly series and learning about the technology. We were actually the first people to do digital projection in Prescott. Oh, that's, that's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> and we had uh, the old uh, Frontier Village Cinema 10 mm -hmm. was supporting to us. Wednesdays was 
not a very good audience for them Wednesday evenings. So they said, hey, we'll take the snack bar, you guys, for free. They let us just screen these films. They gave us a room where we could put our projection equipment. And my husband is a really good technologist. And uh, my nephew, Jared, was helping him. And we they figured out how to do the projection in that theater, hooking up to the sound system and everything. So we did that. And then that theater closed, and we, <laughs> yes. had, and we had one. We showed up for the for the screening, and we were told, "Oh, um, it's time. Uh, we're we're closing tonight. Mm -hmm. Tonight is the last night the theater exists. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get all your equipment out." <laughs> so, <laughs> so we packed everything up, and then it's like, "Okay, now what do we do?" Uh, so we ended up doing screenings at Prescott Mile High Middle School. We did some at Prescott College. Uh, we did a couple at Yavapai College um, and just kept going. And then we did the annual festival. And uh, I think two more years later, 2010 or 11, uh, the college approached us and said, hey, we have this beautiful performing arts center, but we want things that are less expensive so students can afford to go to. So would you come on campus and um, have your screenings here and give the students a discount? And we agreed to do that, and, and we were there for, well, we're still there. That's, uh, it became our home. That's wonderful. And I have to say, I'm just amazed by how times change regarding independent filmmaking. I have a uh, memory of back in the 1990s, I w uh, briefly was associated with an independent filmmaker who was looking to shoot something here and ask me to try to get performers uh, for him and I couldn't get anyone interested. They didn't even really understand in those days what an independent film was, <laughs> even yes. though independent films have been around a long time, but just not here. And right. now we flash forward to the present and we have a thriving independent film in industry almost. And, yes. And performers wanting to do them and it, it, it's really wonderful. <laughs> it is wonderful. And I think part of it is um, that it, it spreads out into not just passion projects, but film is needed for websites and commercials and um, all kinds of applications, training films and education and marketing um, conferences. There's everybody needs video now. Oh, yes. So it's, uh, it's opened up other jobs for people. So yes. I tell my students at the film school that you practice your craft doing mm -hmm. these things and getting paid for them. And then, you know, you, you are better prepared to do your passion projects. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really, it's a big industry and it's going to keep growing. And with that, our audiences are growing for them as well. There was a time for many years, there was a small but vocal group of people in town crying for art films to be shown, and yet when anyone would try to start showing them, nobody went. <laughs> that seems to have changed some too. Yes, and I like to think that the film festival is the art house cinema mm -hmm. for the community because mm -hmm. it's there is no other outlet. We've started through the film school, actually. We're doing New York Film Critics Series, mm -hmm. and those are a lot of fun. We'll pick up again on those after the film festival, but, um, but yeah, bringing those art house films to Prescott, mm -hmm. it's wonderful. All right. And we shall now take a short break. We will return to My Life in Art with our guest, Helen Stevenson, um, momentarily. We'll be right back. Welcome back to My Life in Art, sponsored by the Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council. I'm your host, Parker Anderson, and we are talking with Helen Stevenson, Executive Director of the Prescott Film Festival. Helen, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where you came from, what you did before the film festival, <laughs> that sort of thing? Sure. Um, I was born and raised in Cochise <coughs> County. My parents, uh, we live between Bisbee and Douglas. Um, my baby pictures have B Hill in the background, <laughs> <laughs> which is fun. Um, uh, let's see, I went to uh, Cal State Long Beach, graduated with a bachelor's in radio, TV, film. Right now I'm working on a master's degree from ASU in American media and popular culture. Um, 
my first job was at uh, KTTV Los Angeles. I w wanted to be in news. And I, uh, so I got that job straight out of college, which was fabulous. Um, but news is really um, sad mm -hmm. and wearing on you. And uh, it, was, it was just too much for me to, to be in the newsroom. Mm. So here I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. My, you know, I kept thinking I'd do this from Douglas, you know, going <laughs> to be in news in Los Angeles. I'm there. <laughs> Didn't care for it. Mm. So then I got a job with um, coordinating prizes for game shows on NBC, mm -hmm. NBC game shows. So I did that for a while, and I like to think it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears because mm -hmm. news was too hard and game shows were too soft. <laughs> so <laughs> went in the middle and uh, did my own uh, production company and did industrial videos and documentaries and films. And, yeah, so that was my background. And then I... There was a Northridge earthquake. We lived in Burbank, and the Northridge earthquake happened, and that was it for me. I just needed to get back home to Arizona mm -hmm. and move to Arizona, and it was, I felt like I had won the lottery because I was so happy to be back mm -hmm. and am just delighted with living in Prescott. I've been here since 1995. And, uh, yeah, just started working at the college in 2013 as the director of the film program. I presume you have had an interest in movies and films all your life in order to even entice you to start a film festival, am <laughs> I correct? Um, I grew up a bit media deprived because we, uh, we grew up, I was in the country and we didn't have cable. We had an antenna for TV and we're in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the antenna, we would have a wrench outside uh, next to the window, next to the TV. So. One of my siblings would be outside with a wrench adjusting the antenna, and the other would be inside the house yelling when to stop mm -hmm. as they found the, uh, the proper place to put the antenna for whatever show it was. So television was not a big deal. Uh, we had a drive-in theater in Douglas. It was only open in the summer. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw a few movies. I really vividly remember, um, uh, let's see, Night of the Living Dead when oh, I was a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my dad took us to um, the movie about, it was when they, these guys crashed a plane in the middle of the desert. Oh, was that uh, Flight of the Phoenix? Flight of the Phoenix, <laughs> excellent, yes. So it was Flight of the Phoenix. Um, the very first movie I went to was in Bisbee, and mm -hmm. it was um, Flower Drum Song. All right. So that was my first movie. And then when I was still a little girl, um, we, my parents took us to see Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, that was the film that showed me that movies are magic. Right. And I still have my Mary Poppins doll. Wonderful. <laughs> so that gave me the base of the passion. And then when I did television, because my, my degree included film, it was really fortunate because it mm -hmm. exposed me. It's not just all about the news. It exposed me to, to the world of film also. Very good. Yeah. Now, this year's Prescott Film Festival is coming up uh, next month, June 2017. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the films and the events you have planned for it? I would be happy to. Uh, we're really excited about the films. Um, we start off with a film called Alive and Kicking, and it's a documentary about swing dance. Ah. <laughs> and swing dance has just taken off. I was at uh, Acker Music Night, and there was a group from NAU called uh, Swing Dance Kids called mm -hmm. the Swing Jacks, mm -hmm. and they were fabulous. I mean, I was there with my daughter, Danielle, who's a teenager, and we just kept cycling back to see the swing dancers because mm -hmm. it was just so fabulous. And this documentary came in, and we decided, okay, we've got to make an event out of this. So we have the documentary, we'll have live music afterwards, and swing dancing. And the swing jacks are going to come and start off the, the festival with that. Um, we have a really inspiring movie called Big Sonia mm -hmm. about a woman who survived the Holocaust. She's in her 90s, and she's still running a tailor shop. Wow. She's amazing and so inspiring and tells her story to, to young people and connects with them. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful documentary. Um, 
we have a wine tasting that is the K Syrah Syrah mm -hmm. wine tasting. <laughs> so we'll have a Syrah, of mm -hmm. course, for the tasting. And the, the film after, but after it is called uh, This Beautiful Fantastic, which is a beautiful narrative film. And the film before it is called Tyrus, about uh, a Japanese man who came to America and ended up being an animator for Disney. Aww. And that's a lovely film. Um, we have a Southwest premiere of a film called Floating Horses, The Life mm. of Casey Tibbs. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about rodeo, you know who Casey Tibbs is. Mm -hmm. He's the person who really decided what rodeo could be and would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's his life story, and the filmmaker will be here for that. Wonderful. So we're excited about that one, too. Okay. Sounds like a great lineup. Yes. In the uh, seven previous years of the film festival, do you have any particular favorite moments or exciting moments or thrilling me moments that just live on in your memory? <laughs> I think uh, two years ago, we had a movie called Thebe that was mm -hmm. from Jordan mm -hmm. and loved that film. It just resonated with me. And the filmmaker Skyped in mm -hmm. from Jordan and the Q&A was just, we wanted it to mm -hmm. go on and on and on because here he was in Jordan talking to us in Prescott, Arizona, mm -hmm. and learning about his life and his filmmaking and that whole his whole community over in Jordan of making films. And then that film went on to be nominated for an Oscar for wow. Best Foreign Film. That's so, great. Yeah, so that was, that was a standout. Mm -hmm. um, Ed Asner being here, he was also here mm -hmm. with Mark Rydell. And Mark Rydell is, is a huge name if you mm -hmm. follow film and, and acting. Yes. He... Um, he directed a John Wayne film mm -hmm. and other many other films. And <coughs> it was a privilege to meet him. And it was Ed Asner's a character. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so having dinner with him, it was like you're just ready to dodge bullets. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> he is like that mm -hmm. in real life. So that was a lot of fun. I know other guests. Uh, last year you had uh, Beatrice Wells, Orson Wells' daughter. Yes, and she was so gracious and lovely. Mm -hmm. And um, you you don't ever know what to expect with celebrities or celebrities' mm -hmm. children. And she was wonderful. And she just kept saying, "What can I do? What else can I do to help you?" That was it. Was just it was a beautiful moment with her. Wonderful. She was yeah. here because you were showing. Uh, her dad's film was, was that the lady from Shanghai lady I, from Shanghai and mm -hmm. she she got behind it because it's not the film film festivals normally show right she yes. liked that it was different mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah and I think one year you had uh, the uh, silent film uh, actress Lassie Lou Ahern yes Lassie Lou Ahern Ahern and I... she's um, she's a fabulous character she's mm -hmm. uh, She's probably 97 now, I think. Wow. Um, really sharp. Um, I actually uh, took the film school students and we shot a documentary, which mm -hmm. I am still going to edit. That's my thesis project for my ASU mm -hmm. degree. So that's all in the can and, and is waiting for me to, uh, to finish some classes up and get it edited. Wonderful. And she still lives in Prescott Valley? She does with her, with her daughter. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So what can we expect in future years for the Prescott Film Festival? Bigger and better? <laughs> you know, it just keeps growing. This year we're reaching out a lot to, uh, to Phoenix. We got mm -hmm. a lovely grant from the Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council, and that's for marketing. And mm -hmm. we're going to do social media marketing and reach down into Phoenix. All right. We're and, very uh, happy we can help. It's, yeah, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. It was the first time I'd applied, and mm -hmm. uh, it was fabulous. So, yeah. That's Good. terrific. Have yeah. you had any offers from other festivals to come work for them that you've declined because <laughs> <laughs> you want to stay here? No, no. I, I am in a festival, uh, festival directors group. It's a mm -hmm. closed group on Facebook. But as I said, the three things I'm juggling right now, once I'm done with, uh, with a degree, I can go on and, and do mm -hmm. deeper things like that and market my, you know, my... Uh, our festival better and uh, and do those other kind of things. So give us the dates once again, please, of the press this year's festival. It's June 9th through the 17th. And how many films altogether do you have this year? We have uh, 14 programs, and mm -hmm. most of the time there's a short and a and a feature. Mm -hmm. So um, probably be about 30 films. And 
exciting. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, any, uh, have any films that you've shown at the festival gone on to, shall we say, on more notoriety or wider release at this point that you know of? Well, the one that we finished uh, the festival with last year, and it won for uh, jury, or no, it was an Audience Choice Award, uh, Growing Up Smith, mm -hmm. which was really a cute film and really had a, had a depth to it that made it work. Mm -hmm. They've got a national distribution deal, so they're going from, to theaters all over the United States right now. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Helen, we are very happy that you are here. Thank you for joining us and telling us all about the Prescott Film Festival and sharing a little bit about yourself. Oh, my so. pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So on behalf of the Prescott Area Arts and Humanities Council, um, I'm Parker Anderson for My Life in Art. Please visit our website. We are the primary arts advocacy organization in the Prescott area. And until next month, have a good day.